Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here. And in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the PyBind 11 library. Now, for those of you who don't know that I have a video series on PyBind 11 here. So uh, depending on if you've looked through my channel, there's a couple of videos here on getting set up with PyBind and just doing a few different things. And if you're just joining us again, if you're coming to this series because you've seen my C++ work or SDL work, this is going to be a lesson that's relevant for you. So let me go ahead and just reintroduce PyBind if you haven't seen it. Again, the documentation is quite uh, nice here, and it basically makes it an easy way for us to expose functions from C++ to Python or otherwise to more easily embed a Python interpreter in C++ to execute code. So you can kind of go both ways if you like. Um, and I have... Um, sort of some tutorials on how you can embed the interpreter, meaning the Python interpreter in C++, uh, or otherwise to use your C++ functions inside of Python. So again, that's the value of this tool here. Again, uh, the GitHub has more features here, and again, the documentation is quite extensive. And there are some additions to PyBind, like NanoBind, that's also built off this by the same team as my understanding. Uh, but anyways, today I want to go ahead and extend our PyBind series by talking about um, how to wrap SDL, the simple direct media layer here. And this came from a student question here, and I thought it was sort of, uh, you know, something relevant uh, that we would want to discuss here. So in order to get this started, I'll assume that you have worked through the previous tutorials here. Again, um, whether you're setting up for Ubuntu, uh, for Windows, I use MySys or Mac. There's a few different uh, guides here to help you get started. Um, but you'll want to take a look at this uh, build file here uh, just to get started. And the key is that anytime we have C++ code that we want to expose into Python, well, we're going to essentially build a shared library here. So that's what this flags are doing here. And we're going to be choosing a specific version of Python. Um, and again, we need the development libraries. Again, that's covered in the setup videos if you want to see that um, in order to get things up and running. Uh, and ultimately, this will generate a shared object file since I'm on Linux, a DLL in Windows, or a Dilib file on Mac. Um, and this is what we're going to be importing into Python. This is what Python understands. Now, it's important in this lesson that you do link in the SDL libraries since we'll be using SDL functions here. Um, so if you don't do that, you will get things like segmentation faults. So just make sure that you have um, this otherwise. Okay, so with that said, that's um, the actual build file. Let me actually show you uh, what we'll be doing here. A very simple uh, application that we want to uh, be running. Uh, so let's go ahead and, you know, I usually just call this the logic uh, for the Python. And basically just a uh, way to load our library that we've created. Then we can use any other Python libraries that we have, which again are essentially just C libraries that are wrapped in the same way <laughs> using the, you know, Python, um, you know, library um functions uh but anyways we're just going to want to initialize sdl show the window and then uh, go to sleep for five seconds okay so how do we do that well uh let's go ahead and look at our c code and just from a pragmatic standpoint if you're building an engine or something you know you'd want uh and i'm speaking about a game engine or maybe some scientific visualization toolkit something where you want to do a lot of uh, heavy computation. Again, you push that work off into compiled code, a compiled library, um, as is shown here. So anyways, here's my code uh, for setting up PyBind. Uh, I'll just kind of scroll through it so you can see here. And the basic idea with uh, today's lesson is just to show you that we want to create sort of wrapper classes. I mean, this isn't a bad idea in some sense um, in SDL to wrap some of the functions and take advantage of RAII. Meaning, you know, when I initialize SDL, I also want to, you know, quit when this object is destroyed or goes out of scope. Okay, um, we could maybe argue about, um, you know, if we over abstract this, how that could cause problems. I guess maybe from a performance uh, viewpoint in some ways, but um, the benefits in in many of these cases um, outweigh the costs, in my opinion, for this and. In general, in Python, everything is an object, so we need to structure our code. We can't, um, you know, it, it's nice if we've structured our C++ code as objects um, as shown here. So again, something for you to think about from a design decision, depending on your needs, but um, this is what we're gonna do because it makes things easy to expose a lot of the SDL functions that we need here. 
uh, meaning that I can, um, you know, be able to call this SDL init function, you know, through my uh, object here. And then I have my uh, destructor here. Um, and, and if I have other types here, like SDL window, for instance, um, it's much easier if I just, again, wrap that type in my own custom object, because that's how I want to expose it in Python, which works with objects. Um, and then just have a way to, and let me show you this on uh, one screen just so you can read it, uh, create the uh, window here and supply, you know, some known parameters. You could have many different uh, constructors if you wanted, but uh, that's the basic idea here. And of course, you might want to add some additional error checking. Again, this could be some of the benefit of, you know, wrapping some of these functions um, in your own objects. You can add some error handling routines, some recovery, some logging, if you think that's uh, necessary here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, expose this function here because we want to be able to uh, destroy our window after we've created it. Again, just using uh, C++'s RAII. Um, and again, this is effectively what I'm wrapping here at the window. Okay, so um, how do I then expose um, these functions? Well, this is where PyBind11 comes in. Now, PyBind11 is, again, a useful toolkit for... Um, you know, making this relatively easy to just wrap objects and export them out to Python. You can do this using just the, you know, native Python API. Um, and it's got things for like Py object and, you know, creating Py functions and so on. Uh, but this makes it relatively easy. Okay. So here's our library name. It's going to be part of this module. You can add some doc strings here. Um, and then here are the two classes that we want to expose. So I have one class here, specify here, SDL, uh, just sort of the textual uh, name here, and then the member functions. In this case, just the constructor here. Uh, so this one doesn't take any parameters. And then for our SDL window, we repeat, do the same thing. Now this one had five parameters here for our constructor. Um, so you can see I have those associated uh, arguments here. So just another uh, example here. Let's go ahead and... Um, I'm going to just go ahead and scroll through the code one more time just so you can see. Again, this is just some setup stuff. Um, I'm supporting Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac users, so you might have different include paths there. Um, so I just used a uh, define to uh, specify. Uh, PyBind library, again, you can read on the documentation for how to get that set up. Um, and then my two wrapper classes here, SDL and SDL. Uh, window for creation of the window. And of course, you could add other stuff like you're probably going to want an SDL render. Um, you can make that part of the SDL window or you know create another class again to wrap that. Um, and then that will work just uh, fine here. Uh, and then finally, here's the PyBind uh, sort of magic um, uh, to sort of uh, uh, wrap your uh, your classes here. So here are the two uh, different classes and each of the member functions that I want to export. Uh, you don't have to, you know, export everything or expose everything to Python, um, but uh, in this case we will. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, compile this. Uh, so I'm just going to run this uh, shell script here uh, and build my library. So now I have that library.so file. Um, and then once I've built my library, well, I'm just going to run my uh, logic script here using Python. And the version, again, if you get errors here, right, if you have Python 3.1, uh, uh, or, or I should say 3. Uh, you know, 6 versus 3.10 or something, that it does matter when you're compiling, so do be a little bit uh, careful. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and run this. Um, it's running my application here. Uh, it's going to display it for five seconds and then destroy it. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, and again, this is just running the logic script, this script that I've written on the uh, right side of your screen here. Go ahead and run it again here. And you can have fun kind of uh, creating wrapper classes uh, of your favorite C, C++ libraries, and so on after doing this. Uh, so there you have it, folks. This is a little bit of an older series, but I still wanted to bring it to you because I think it's valuable for some folks. And uh, again, if you're doing a lot of your work in Python and scripting or thinking about how to add a scripting language uh, to your C++ or just, again, um, you know, make your C++ code more widely available uh, through Python libraries, uh, this is the series for you to check out, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, folks, as always, thanks for your time and attention. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss uh, fun lessons like this or my other series. And with that said, folks, I'll go ahead and look forward to seeing you in the next one.